Hey guys, Frozen Lion right I'm back and this is a real upload of a video that I put out yesterday on the Daisy standalone uh, from E3. The coverage was brought from my uh, network partner Machinima and I'm re uploading this because the quality was not up to my usually high standards. Um, the reason being is I took the footage directly from the stream at the time and it wasn't good enough, it just was not good enough. Um, I've now managed to find a, uh, another, another version of the stream um, or another upload of the stream and it's in full HD this time. It's full HD, it's not upscaled, so the quality of this video should be absolutely crisp as it can be. Obviously, some people like, might be like, oh, why did you re upload it? Because I want to bring you guys the best footage I can for the Daisy Standalone. So here it is. This will be the uh, Daisy Standalone coverage as it was yesterday. Uh, Rocket talks about um, a lot of the new features, a lot of the server, kind of architecture, which is m where most of the work's been uh, going on behind the scenes to turn the game from sort of a first person shooter to an MMO um, to bring the uh, best experience possible and also to eliminate uh, a lot of the hacking that happened originally uh, in the, the Daisy standalone, um, or the Daisy mod, sorry, to prevent that from happening in the Daisy standalone. So here it is, this is the interview you've all been waiting for, and it's now in full HD. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and please leave this video a like in the end if you enjoyed it and uh, yep, I'm sorry about the call yesterday, I tried to bring you the footage as fast as I could um, but it was direct from the stream so it wasn't the usual high quality but it is now. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all soon. Oh, hello, hello. Your friend Hundar here with a very special guest, Dean Hall, aka Rocket. How you been? Yeah, good, thanks. Good to see you again. I just shook your yeah, hand, I'll shake it again. <laughs> Last time we talked was uh, PAX, PAX East. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't know. It feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like a lifetime ago. <laughs> uh, plenty of stuff going on. I'm sure you guys have been busy. Uh, what's sort of the, uh, the vibe of the day for you, Ben? Uh, have you been running to a lot of appointments? Have you been pretty... Uh, yeah. It's, it's actually been pretty good. Like, I guess all the previous sort of video game conferences we've been to, it's all been talking. But yeah. actually here, you know, we can actually show people what we're doing. Right. And uh, so that's that's basically what I've been doing, is just standing at the at the stand, talking to people and showing, letting them play the game. And, and, and it's I guess that's really good for us, like, to finally be able to do that. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I feel like to this point, people have been watching sort of the dev diaries to sort of keep up mm -hmm. with that sort of thing, but now this is the opportunity. So you guys uh, have brought some, we're going to actually check the game out here yep. on this live stream, assuming we get this computer will pop up here in a second. <laughs> Do you want to sort of give us an overview of the changes uh, since the last time we talked, I guess? I know it seemed like the last time we talked, uh, the focus was definitely on zombie pathing and sort of the... Yep. the, 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 the uh, making them more of a real threat than something you just sort of strafe circle around. So sort of what's the state of that? Yeah, well, uh, we'll be able to see zombies are, are going to be a work in progress, I'd say, for at least, well, for the, the entire time we're doing development and doing patches. Right. Uh, but we're really, we're happy with a number of elements of it. One of them you'll see is the jumping attacks uh, and the fact that the zombies can attack while they're moving. Mm. Because one of the big problems with the mod was the zombies would run along, stop, and then attack. Mm -hmm. And I guess a lot of people are critical of the zombies and say, why can't they be more like Left 4 Dead or something like that? But they don't realize the Daisy map is 260 square kilometers. Um, it's a huge map which causes real issues for AI pathfinding. You can't do things in a traditional way that you do with a lot of games. So it's uh, it's something, you know, something that we're going to be working at uh, quite heavily here. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, you can see here he's running around inside a building. We'll probably actually see, it doesn't take long before a zombie comes and <laughs> comes no, and hits it, you. It really never does. Mm. Uh, was there anything in terms of, you know, as far as the different zombie attacks and places you want to go with that, that uh, you guys know, knew you wanted to attempt once you started on this, or specific inspirations you were drawing on for, like, the feel of the, the zombies of this world? Yeah, well, we were doing, we definitely took a lot of inspiration from movies like uh, 28 Days Later and stuff like that, because the idea was to try and make the situation authentic. Mm -hmm. You can't make it realistic, but authentic, definitely. Right. So the idea was that, and the mod, the zombies weren't fluid. They were really glitchy. In fact, they were one of the worst areas of the mod. Mm. And they're still one of the weaker areas of standalone. But we're putting a lot of work into them, and that you know that's one of our key focuses. And, and I think having the zombies so that they actually jump around after you, um, when you get hit by the zombie, your body gets knocked. You can actually get knocked right down. So the idea was to really make, yeah, the zombies feel much more authentic. Yeah. 
Always the worst moment, being knocked down in a zombie movie. Yeah. Whenever you're sort of thinking about, I guess, just the different approaches, there's so many ways to sort of go about an authentic sort of zombie experience, whether that's the fast-moving things where it's like just hoping not to be seen, or, or sort of yeah. those slow-building moments where you know you're in territory, but just sort of trying to navigate that. Where do you sort of split the line in terms of the balance of how, how you want it to feel uh, in DayZ? Is there, is there, I mean, it seems like obviously the fast-moving thing has sort of the emphasis, but are you interested in, in sort of ex experimenting with different types? on that regard? Yeah, so one thing we want to do is have it so that there's more of a sort of a zombie life cycle. So the idea is if the zombies are unhealthy, they'll start to get slower. Maybe they'll get injured, so they'll start shambling then. Yeah. Uh, the problem with all that is it all requires more animation. And because this isn't a heavily stylized game, say like uh, Minecraft or that, right. there's a lot of work involved in animating that. And yeah. we've actually got a new uh, skeleton and a new uh, body involved with it. So. Yeah, so that's it's a lot of work that's involved, so it's really going to be an ongoing process to achieve that. But that's what we want to have, so that particularly now that under um, under the yeah the the whole new architecture we've got, yeah. I, I saw something I hadn't seen before in there. I was like, <laughs> what? The artist actually finished that. Uh, it was the it was the rubble on the road. Oh, cool. Yeah. So one, once we've now that we're doing this whole server client architecture thing, uh -huh. uh, it means that the zombies are always there. So they don't just spawn around a village when players are there. So we can do stuff like measure the zombies' hungry, hunger level. We can have them be roving zombies. Right. So yeah, it's something we want to work on, but it's we're really focused on the foundation for the alpha. Right. Once we've got a good base of the really basic stuff, then we're going to start doing the more exciting stuff. Right, because I imagine, I mean, all that stuff, and you had mentioned sort of like roving bands of zombies, it, it, every iteration of that's just affecting the gameplay in a different way yeah. from sort of to try to establish what people are already sort of used to, right? So, uh, so another thing you've mentioned before is sort of, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the easy to get distracted zombie. here too, yeah. It is. She's, she's, she's excited. <laughs> um, sort of the interior environments, uh, I know you're expanding a lot in terms of not just the detail in there, but also the things you can interact with and things like that. For people that are sort of unfamiliar with the, the jump from maybe what they're used to in the mod to, to, to where you're at now, can you sort of walk us through some of that? Yeah, so that was um, perhaps one of the first things we touched because it was one of the easiest things because it was an art pipeline issue. So much of what we've had to do over the last 12 months has been taking a, an old engine, gutting it, and then putting in new, making an MMO, which is a lot of work. Right. But the interiors were incredibly important for an emergent perspective. And they're also important for in terms of loot spawning. So yeah, we approached it with, we effectively wanted all buildings enterable. We, we still don't have all buildings enterable, but we're looking at about 90-95%, uh, which is a great deal more than the mod. And absolutely. the detail and the quality that's been put into them has been absolutely fantastic by the Bohemia artists. So yeah, so we're really pleased with how that's working out, and I think it's going to you know, it's going to add some pretty challenging gameplay, not from only the looting perspective, but dealing with players like they've got plenty of places to hide. Right. And, and how much does that affect in terms, in terms of speaking purely on loot, where you've got that many more opportunities to hide loot on shelves and things like that? Should we expect more, or is it just more of a uh, every building needs to be searched more thoroughly sort of type deal? Yeah, well, the idea is to have a lot more loot spawns, but have them much rarer. So an example being there's a new area to the north and, uh, and the northeast and northwest of Cherno mm -hmm. that has these massive apartment buildings. Now, we're redoing the, the apartment buildings from scratch so that you can enter every single room. Wow. They're going to be quite gutted because you're obviously limited on polygon budget and stuff like that. Sure. So they will be quite, they'll, they'll have not much in them, but they'll have a tremendous amount of opportunity for loot, but at a very low percentage. So the idea is that you're really going to be scavenging. You can scavenge all over the place, and you'll see as he's going around, like, uh, you can see, um, yeah, just a whole bunch of stuff like uh, hidden under tables and stuff like that. So he's, he's, you know, having to look for stuff. Yeah. And I guess that was a real key was to have people actually scavenging the environment. Right. I like the helmet he's rocking. Looking. Yeah, the helmet is it's actually my favourite item in Daisy <laughs> easily, and and it's actually a practical item because it helps you with melee and uh, with the zombie attacks um, yeah. defend against them. I, I think there's something. Uh, makes you feel invincible about a helmet too. You can be in nothing else except the helmet and somehow feel like you maybe have like <laughs> some some odds here. And, uh, and I guess that's one of the cool things for us is there's now already there's like hundreds of different items, but on our list we have thousands. Wow. And we're pumping out like uh, you know five or six completely new stuff like every couple of weeks. So the the pace of it is very significant. And I it's one of the major areas. It's it's kind of like Daisy's leveling as your gear. So yeah, and I think 
heavily, you know, cu heavy customization of the character is quite a big deal for us. Very cool. Well, I think we're going to take some questions uh, from Steven and Larson over there from the, the social wall. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hello, gentlemen. Hello. We have Sounds questions good. for you. Steve, would you like to begin? We have questions. Uh, let's see here. Well, we have one from the Twitter board here. Uh, it says, G4 TV leader, uh, are you excited to see Daisy as a standalone title, and how do you think it will fare? So, is that a question for Dean, for or I mean, is that a question for us? The question was uh, was just, are we excited to see Daisy as a standalone title, and how do we think it will fare? Uh, I we mean, can both answer. Yeah, what's <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm excited. I, I, I definitely enjoy processes where like this where you get to sort of watch you know uh, an improvement being built onto something that already exists where you can sort of and, and a developer that's willing to sort of take the step by step uh, demonstrating that process you know what I mean all, all the diaries you guys yeah. do are really fascinating to me personally so I think that's cool <laughs> yeah well I guess from from my perspective it's all a big experiment really like being so open in the development has has some negatives for us you know we were saying the other day it would have been kind of good to have being secret because there's no expectation right, right. you want to be open with people but it does build hype and then you try not to build hype but you just end up building it so yeah so it was a bit nerve-wracking today we wondered it's still very rough uh, but I think people who are aware of you know game development that realize that that a lot of the architecture now is there and it's yeah. working and it's good so now it's just about pumping content in, tidying up the the rough edge bits around the edges and but it seems like the response has been very positive certainly the people at the booth have been very happy with the progress so right. you know this is kind of like a report card for DayZ so <laughs> I'm not sure what we'll get but you know I'm hoping for a B minus yeah no yeah. absolutely uh, let's get one we got time for one more question one from more from angry banana will angry there be banana. any new weapons and vehicles in this standalone Angry Banana, perhaps a person named that or an actual Angry Banana watching right now, <laughs> wants to know, will there be new weapons and vehicles? And I think... Uh, weapons, absolutely. So we're actually redoing all the weapons from scratch. And the reason for that is our attachment system. So with a lot of weapons, you can add stuff to them. It depends. Like uh, the more hunting style weapons, it's, you know, there's, there's not as many attachments as, say, an M4 or right. an AK. But uh, yeah, so that's a huge focus for us. And and the idea of redoing them all is we wanted to improve the quality, we wanted to add these new attachments. You can add like, uh, you know, like uh, silencers, new scopes, uh, different kinds of magazines, all this kind of stuff. Vehicles, uh, we want to redo vehicles completely. Uh, we don't want to just go out and say, okay, we're just going to add a helicopter, a new helicopter, or a new this or new that. Yeah. So the idea is probably we're going to release the alpha either with just the standard vehicles that were in armor and the mod and that sort of stuff mm -hmm. or we might not have them at all and we might redo vehicles completely and roll them in in a patch because what we want is for people to be able to scavenge off vehicles so you kind of have this husk of a vehicle and you can cool. put like go get a door off another vehicle and put it on or a <laughs> wheel and yeah. and an engine from this vehicle so that's really what we want to do and that that fits in with the rest of the game in terms of its inventory and weapon attachments here I love that you guys never do anything halfway. It's like, yes, we completely redid this. Or yeah. <laughs> just had to, had to make sure it was right from the ground up. So, uh, all right, one more question. One more question. Yeah, we got, uh, will Daisy come to consoles? So, will Daisy come to consoles? Um, yeah, well, I think yes. Um, I think that the onus is on us at, to not screw up the PC release. I think if it was very unsuccessful on the PC, then there wouldn't be a console port. But I think uh, definitely, I mean, what we saw from uh, from Sony, you know, has really made made us all very happy, and uh, you know, good support for indie titles, and that's incredibly important. Like, Absolutely. and you know, people are talking about it, but everyone seems to focus on the whole used game side of it and stuff. <laughs> but you know, I think I think support of indie titles is really important for a console manufacturer if they want to see a game like DayZ. Uh, on their console. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope that discussion goes well. <laughs> uh, we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at a uh, uh, basically something about the PS4 right now from our pre 3 Dean, awesome. always a pleasure. Thank you for Thanks. stopping Thanks. by. Thanks for having us. Appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers.